to another episode of Wellness Curated. This is your host, Anshu Bahanda. And as I always say, uh, the aim of this podcast is to bring you a healthier, happier, more hopeful life. Now hold that thought. We're going to be talking about happiness today. We're here to explore scientific and psychological insights, as well as develop certain personal practices that will help us to hack happiness. So to throw light on this, we have behavior analyst and founder of the Mental Fitness Gym, Aspire, Perform, Transform, or ACT. And her name is Aditi Surana. Aditi will walk us through strategies that individuals and corporates can use to enhance happiness. Welcome to the chat, Aditi, and thank you for being here with us today. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Aditi, I'm going to start with what, with you explaining what your Mental Fitness Gym app actually is. And can you tell us if it's a gym, there's obviously exercises involved and what sort of exercises are there? Okay. So during the pandemic, I, for the first time, started my uh, social initiative to help people deal with anxiety. I work as a high performance coach. So I knew that, you know, the mindset that one can cultivate to be a high performer is, is a very, very important thing. But when we started working with people, when they were feeling anxious and helpless, we realized people do not have what is required to build the mindset, which is the healthy mental fitness. And that's the that's the thought that was the idea to start India's only mental fitness gym. And as you rightly said, gym is all about creating workouts and about having one thought uh, and building that, that emotional stability. So for example, we all fight with people we love and people we are in relationships with, but we don't know how to fight with people we love. So on the mental fitness gym, we decided to take one entire month to figure out Why do we take things personally? Why do we fight and why we bring in all the past and what can one do about it? But when you uh, have discussed this in a group or you you have like a toolbox, you have the muscle already built, you're not as angry and as vindictive in fights as you otherwise can be because you know all of this is happening for a certain reason. One month, we only spoke about emotional baggage that we carry around all the time, but we don't know how to process it or how to make it slightly lighter. So in this way, we every month pick up a new topic and break it down for people to experience the technical scientific ways in which they can deal with the problems that they're facing. So I want to ask you to explain to me, what does it actually mean to hack happiness? And what does happiness mean to you? Because it means different things to different people. And actually, can you really hack happiness? So I, you know, b- because I knew I'm preparing for today's session, I thought a lot about it. And I have spoken about this multiple times, but I genuinely feel happiness is overrated. As an right. idea. <laughs> we all think that happiness is about the result or is, is something that you experience as a result of something that you achieve. So if you do not achieve that perfect marriage, that perfect body image, that perfect idea, then you can't be happy. And my personal and professional belief on this is, if we start understanding that playing a game is by itself winning, then your definition of happiness changes from the result to the process. And if you can, and today we'll talk about it, how you can, but the very moment you understand that my engagement with my process will define my happiness with it, then whether it goes ahead, whether it really culminates in what you have imagined or what you think it should be or not, you can still find your your scorecard of happiness in that entire journey. You know, Aditi, you've told us so much in that one little sentence. And you've taken such a spiritual approach to this. It's just this. But that's so hard. What you're saying is so hard to enjoy the journey and not just focus on the end result. But before we get to that, I want to ask you something else. So how do you track it? And how will you measure it? And how will you see that it's growing? Both from an individual point of view as well as from the point of view of corporates you know, when people are trying to look at their teams, because what happens is 
very often you give out a survey and people are worried it's not anonymous that it you know people will find out who said what so people feel happy when they belong people feel happy when they have connection with what they do they feel happy when they have involvement into things that they opt for now these are things that can be created only by creating an environment to achieve things or create things most of the time people forget and something i love working with teams for because when multiple people come together to be able to negotiate a common connecting point is the toughest goal or toughest uh, problem to solve but the very moment you know what is that common problem you realize that even if the process is tougher people bond all the markers that we have of behavior and happiness and engagement in organization and individually you know personal areas are defined by what people think about us and not what we genuinely experience i'm going to use an analogy my favorite story imagine you and i uh, meet for a cup of coffee and we see a man running now we don't know why he is running but we think about three possibilities why he is running uh, so, you know i think probably there is a kite in the sky that he wants to catch you say probably not probably there is a dog behind him and that's why he's running and while we are talking the server who is standing next to us says no 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 he's a regular customer he's running because he's preparing for a marathon that may happen after two two months now mm-hmm. in all these three possibilities the action is the same point a to point b running so we gauge people's happiness from that point a to point b journey and say oh did you run enough but if you look at it the motive behind the action defines the experience of the action and that is the the problem because our markers are wrong we think nobody can be happy running from one point to the other because our reference is the dog our reference is the kite or but if you really look at it if somebody wants to run they want to prepare for that they may enjoy it so you got to understand that personal context so do you think we need to come up with a new way of tracking it a new way of tracking happiness you think we don't have the markers currently to track it i think the markers are externally oriented and they got to be internally oriented and the very moment you do that they become so subjective that people can't compare one person's happiness to other that doesn't serve the purpose of a survey and something that in an organization that i was working with we redefined this and said can we relook at it every 3 months so it can't be that one idea that i think this is happiness or this is productivity we relook at it after 3 months after 6 months that sounds wonderful actually you know i was reading somewhere that there is something called a happy gene and some people have it and some people don't and the people that have it find it easier to find happiness in spite of their circumstances while those who don't have it even little things can just throw them off balance i absolutely disagree with this like I, you might have that genes but something about neuroplasticity that i'm in love with that whether you mm-hmm. have that genes or not or whether you are wired to do something or not you can always train your mind and your neuro pathways to create newer belief system and that is the boon that we have as human beings so whether you have the gene or not don't worry about it how do we apply this process can you give it to us in do a do b do c like that so that we can change our key behavior so we feel happier okay so uh this comes uh as an implementation of mihai chiksen mihai's concept called flow he says this is like the uh, optimum happiness levels that people showed in the world were based on the state of flow that they stepped into he spoke to artists musicians athletes and he found out that they hit a space where they feel extremely happy no matter what is happening they are in that state of flow no matter how tough things are and we can use that model or i generally do to create your so called formula to be happy especially in challenging situations especially by inviting challenges so i i believe that growth uh, growth happens when you are in a grind it cannot happen when you are sitting comfortably not challenging yourself and growth is the easiest way for you to find your happiness uh, hormone again when we are growing when we are learning when we are are challenging when we are unlearning us our our previous belief system is where the growth happens according to mihai chiksen mihai he says 
that the flow state is where the challenge level and skill levels are at its maximum level which means you're doing a task where you are at your, the the task demands that your skill is challenged over and over again so let's break it down in steps what can you do pick up one activity where you feel that you are fairly good at you know it's not something that is extremely complicated for you it could be cooking it could be writing it could be anything and i would recommend that you start with something which is non professional for first master the ability to get in the state of flow over and over again and then apply to any professional uh, skill set so for example you pick up cooking now you pick that activity and say you know what this recipe i can't hack because it's beyond my ability i've never cooked this and i don't know how to do it so i'm going to pick this up and i don't have the skill set for it so i'm going to build the skill set and until you don't build that skill set for that one recipe you you continue to practice that one thing over and over again and while you do that you become involved with that activity you become intense you be, you surrender to the process and you observe deeply now any time you start observing any process physically with all five senses involved the whole game changes no i just want to ask you what happens if someone says i'm not creative at all like you're saying pick up any activity you're good at right but sometimes people say oh i'm not good at anything i can't sing i can't paint i can't cook what what could be the case like can you see the line art like just to draw like okay i don't know it's audio platform but i i do line art and just to draw lines which are very close and parallel to one another you require tremendous amount of attention to it it is a challenge that because the lines are very very close it requires involvement and it is at the skill set which most of us do not have so you have to you know with practice you got to start doing things you haven't done task can be anything but if you are involved enough you can start engaging with it the best example is you know i have friends who didn't like kids per se or pets at all mm-hmm. until they had their own kids or pets and suddenly every small thing that the child did was so important and that brought so much of happiness because the involvement the attachment the the surrender to the process was much higher okay uh for example if you want to buy something that really matters to you and you go from one shop to the other one website to the other when you really find it and you know something that you're looking for we get much happier not because you bought a thing you keep buying things every now and then but that one thing that you were so involved with and you really wanted it and that happened now we think that life should throw these experiences at us and if life does not then we just wait for that moment to come and then when when it would come i would be happy what you keep telling yourself if you know that my job is to create this state of flow by creating different activities and environment like that then you are more in charge we feel happy when we are in control of things we feel unhappy or anxious when we feel out of control you said we we're, we're happy when we're in charge of things i want to ask you something we're living in a world where there's so much change tell me how you can we be in control in a situation like this so we for have example to change i agree the very moment we understand what, where i have control and where i can choose my involvement we change the game we might be in conversations that we don't want to be in but we have to be in and most of the time that is unhappiness for people and this is where you create a game of involvement like i'm a behavioral analyst and for me uh a social conversations which are not really meaningful are tough to be in now my game is to observe people's micro expressions when i have a game to to look at their micro expressions and and see what they are saying beyond what they are saying no matter how long the conversation or the party goes my game of happiness is about being involved in my game now we don't think we have control over life or life situations but we have a lot more control as kids we did that naturally isn't it mom kept us wherever we had to be and we found a little game we looked at the the uh, the ants or like that little toy that we had and we engaged with it that same possibility is not there not because of things because of our mindset and the very moment we start realizing we can't control the inevitable but whatever we can control we can still play the games 
that we would like to to be engaged involved and have fun with i think all of us did that during the pandemic when we accepted after 45 days maybe that we can't go out then we just evaluated wherever we were and in that given situation in all the constraints people have reported that they were most disciplined they found their mm-hmm. rhythm they built the the body and they built cultivated the craft why technically when you're constrained like this and when you feel so much out of control you should feel miserable but i wanted to ask you some of what do you think with your experience are some of the common obstacles in achieving personal happiness in the last 60 or 70 years from the time industrialization has happened or capitalization for that matter we are bombarded with imagery which defines happiness by certain kind of possessions and if we don't possess that car that product that brand then happiness won't be achieved is what all the micro messaging is doing so imagine your subconscious idea what happiness looks like is defined by what you see on the holdings on in the ads everywhere possible and the best of the minds in the world are fighting for your mind space so we live in a society that is working very very hard to convince you that without their product their their mechanism their machinery you can't be happy so to fight that program is extremely difficult so it is not completely your fault that you don't feel happy because you live in an environment which constantly tells you you're not enough you're not good enough you're not beautiful enough and i when i started the the, the mental fitness gym i had only one i idea in my mind that I, i wanted to contribute to making india mentally fit and i feel that very strongly because we are encouraged every single day to buy into ideas that make us more and more unhappy we we are told that the ideal happiness happens post retirement when you have that house when you have that car when you have everything 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 and which translates into not living life for many many years and eventually one fine day when you reach a level where your physical strength and mental capacity is are gone you might find happiness today gen z is questioning that idea and i love them for it because they are like i don't want to go through this imbalanced life and then discover i may or may not be happy so you know it, it looks revolutionary but it's only valid for us to understand that what if we just pause and say okay wait what is my idea my definition of happiness so while we're talking about external factors aditi you know you said very rightly that there's all these ideas so the environment is one big external factor then there's relationships right i mean from from the time mankind appeared we've been looking for partners then there's this concept of job satisfaction probably like you said the whole industrial revolution capitalism it's made job satisfaction this big deal right now what is the impact that all these have on personal happiness because when you read about happiness when you read any of the say whether it's a spiritual book or any books on happiness it talks about happiness coming from the inside but i'd be lying if i said that the external factors don't make a difference if you're to lose a loved one you know uh if you're to lose a job but when people are not happy then their work suffers then their personal life suffer so it becomes like a cycle so, so I, i this this is where i began the conversation by saying happiness is overrated because people feel they can work in the optimum uh, productivity levels or higher performance levels when they are happy like we all know that in order to build the skill set required to be the masters that we appreciate any master you you take they had to go through certain level of suffering and suffering is not necessarily a bad idea we are told that it's a bad idea but this is the grind is where the growth is so sometimes you know the very moment you accept that if in order to build what i want to build i will have some degree of suffering your pain about the suffering reduces 
like for example when you do physical workout you know it we we all have sore uh, muscles and we we can't sit but when your trainer tells you that in order to create the results that you want you will go through this kind of pain and suffering then you become more tolerant towards it similarly in relationships the very moment you accept that is going to be complex plus it would have the beautiful moments then you won't think it is end of the world or if you look at your career and you say you know it's going to be stressful but instead of fighting the the idea that i shouldn't be stressed what if i build my stress appetite stress appetite is a concept i introduced uh, i wrote about in 2021 because i believe that stress is not necessarily a bad thing when you build the appetite towards it slowly steadily you train yourself to deal with more and more stress and then the same degree of stress which was devastating for you after training enough becomes manageable i see so can we give people something to follow which will make them happy so first of all physical workout is a really really important part of any fitness regime like i have never met a person who is intellectually very very happy professionally very happy without having any physical uh, ele- workout element into it and that's because of you know we all know a lot about this that you know the chemicals that the body releases and and the kind of hormonal mm-hmm. journey and all of that and often not only that but for our muscles to be active for our minds to know that, that we have the capacity to run is an essential aspect of it so highly highly recommended uh second thing i feel one you must have as your regime is journaling we do not know what to do with our disturbed emotions and we carry them because we don't have any place to keep it it's so intangible for your emotions to to be in control and all of us no matter how happy you are and how how zen you are the very moment you involve and engage with the world you will have emotions which are uncontrolled emotions which are triggering emotions which are unpleasant if you know as a practice you have a space to dump all these emotions somewhere then it is like like a like a space that you build so i i use a technique called dump journaling where i literally on a timer uh, ask people to do this three times so you require only 12 minutes and that that could be a good tool for our our listeners to try so to uh, set a timer for 12 minutes and ask yourself no so start ask yourself a question what is overwhelming me right now and set a timer for 3 minutes and write whatever comes to your mind don't stop if you want to abuse you want to say things just it's okay it's only you and your 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 diary or your pages just say it all don't be politically correct do not edit it mm. after that set a timer for just 1 minute and observe your breath don't do anything but observe your breath one more time 3 minute cycle of writing one minute cycle of observing the breath one more time three minute cycle of writing one minute cycle of observing your breath and keep asking the same question what is overwhelming me right now people have spoken about like the really annoying triggers and after the second attempt they're like i don't feel like writing anything and some people wrote three times and they still had so much more to write so next day they wrote again and wrote again so depending on how deep your wound is the emotional triggers will create that that you know that reaction but it's okay to have those reactions in a society that we live in we are not allowed to react honestly but we have to have some space to react honestly so that we can be genuinely happy the next thing okay. is we have to have some routine to add calmness into our day okay some people do that by listening to music some people do that by walking barefoot in the park some people do that by uh, a handwriting stroke that i teach called kam sutra it's a calming s stroke formation that i have created and it it works a lot some people do that by doodling some people do that by whatever okay, right but you have to have a small little calmness routine because and we didn't require it probably 40 years ago because life was calmer um, in comparison yes. to where we are at but bruce lee says calmness is a superpower if you can just have that calmness break for yourself only for yourself in the middle of a busy day it allows your mind to know that it can have a breather okay okay lastly really really important one is observe your sleep 
people think that their insomnia is about this and that i i have spoken about this and i believe really your sleep is a representation of whatever is happening during the day so if your sleep is not deep enough which means your body is telling you to change something about your your day your career your life your relationships and people just sometimes choose to pop pills or they ignore this they stay awake they say no i have this problem they they start living with it but they don't make changes in the way they live their lives so you you said physical fitness journaling for emotional fitness then you said calmness and observe your sleep four things now we did a podcast with shreyans daga on gratitude and i want to ask you something that i asked him you know in life sometimes there's one trouble after the other and some people just go through a stage where they lose loved ones they lose their jobs they're going through major health crisis it's the situation is such that is very hap- un- very difficult to be grateful or happy because gr- gratitude is a big step towards happiness as well in that kind of a situation would you say it's okay to say okay i will be happy at some stage it's okay to grieve today it's okay to suffer today just give yourself some time to just don't expect yourself to run tomorrow just walk just engage with one person and when you feel better engage with a few more but make it easy on yourself because i i went through a divorce and i lost my father in the same uh, period of 6 months and it was extremely tough and in spite of being a coach and in spite of knowing all these tools i had a had a like a phase where i collapsed and i remember my friends who were like and my teachers came you know they were like it's absolutely fine to have that collapse to to have this phase you don't have to be a coach you don't have to you know prove that you can figure this out and we don't realize when we set those expectations for ourselves and that only makes it very very difficult so don't be harsh with yourself okay thank you for that aditi there's something else i want to ask you about now let's talk about another very important external stimulus and that is people people are always around you all the time <laughs> right but we can't really choose family and you hear this a lot from people that we can't choose our family so what happens when there is someone in the family who's constantly triggering you how would you recommend we handle a situation like that and get over and above it to still be happy so i believe not only that one family member or that one boss or that one colleague anything that triggers us anything okay this is something many people might not like me saying it but hear the whole point if if anything is triggering you there is a victim story that you're carrying around it uh, in in bollywood there is a song called ata majhi satakli which is uh, from this movie singham and i use that song about all the emotional triggers people have is atama ji certainly wherever you have that moment where you think you are like triggered by people is an area for you to know this is as far as your mental fitness can go this is as far as your calmness can go not only this one person tomorrow anybody can talk about your body or your weight and you'll have the same reaction and it so happens i don't know how but if you have a trigger you'll always find more than one person <laughs> to press that button because somehow until you don't switch off the button completely deactivated people would come and press keep pressing it so your triggers is actually the map that shows all the areas that you need to work on wonderful thank you aditi now we're going to do a quick rapid fire round to summarize our chat so one major obstacle that keeps us from ex- experiencing the happiness we deserve entitlement okay one practice that will help hack happiness and how often should one do 54321 tool which you actually involve all five senses and take a moment like literally 5 minutes to see five things that you can see observe so go one sense at, at a time and really ground yourself a powerful way to remind us in tough times what happiness that happiness is within reach a song uh, a person or a thing that you're extremely grateful for or you can engage with so create a library of things that you can you can fall on before the actual tough time comes so do it every day 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Aditi. I think we're going to help a lot of people with this chat. I'm very excited for it to go out to our listeners. Thank you so much for inviting me. I've never spoken about happiness as a focus topic ever before. So this was really, really interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And to my listeners, I hope we, you learned something new. And I hope we brought you a little bit closer to being happier in your lives. If you enjoyed this, please press like and invite your friends and family to share uh, the podcast. And also, I would love to hear from you. So any questions you have, any suggestions on topics, or just any comments, please send me an email at anshu at wellnesscurated.life. Thank you for being here and thank you for wanting to get healthier. Thank you.